Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, the public health risks associated with the uh, spread of coronavirus has required us to um, take some significant measures over the past few weeks with our stay-at-home orders. And they have uh, brought us to the position we are in today so we can start talking about relaxing those orders. But before we do that, I'd like to review some of the things that the St. Louis County Department of Public Health has been doing. We have been focusing all of our efforts on the past few weeks on testing, acquiring testing materials, contact tracing, purchasing and distributing PPE. We are in the process of purchasing an additional 100,000 tests. We have commissioned a study, a serology study or an antibody study to determine how the um, COVID-19 virus has spread in our community among people who are um, asymptomatic and who have uh, not, um, not uh, known that they had the virus. And as we know, that is a big part of the problem that we have. We are working with our public health experts on an innovative um, study to uh, test wastewater and see where the COVID-19 infection has spread or is spreading in our community. We have developed new contact tracing software. We are in the process of hiring another 100 people to do contact tracing in addition to the 70 volunteers that we already have. And we are training 10 new people a day on our contact tracing procedures. We are purchasing more PPE, more protective equipment. We have distributed over 216,000 masks to police and first responders. We are in the process of distributing another 200,000 masks in our community and we are purchasing another two and a half million masks. We are focusing on our vulnerable populations. We have developed a high risk task force that works with our nursing homes and senior living centers, congregated living centers to provide them with educational materials and PPE to help them uh, prepare to properly uh, um, uh, take care of our uh, seniors and our folks with chronic medical problems in nursing facilities. We also have uh, distributed 20,000 masks in this setting, and we have developed a quick response task force for any nursing home or congregated living facility that has uh, developed a positive COVID-19 uh, patient so that everyone can be tested. This task force includes epidemiologists and um, other experts to, to teach and train on uh, proper disinfecting procedures and to make sure they have the equipment they need. Our public health team has been very busy and will be very busy in the coming months. We will continue to encourage uh, St. Louis County residents to stay at home when possible, especially those with uh, chronic medical conditions who would be high risk to uh, contact COVID-19. We're going to talk today and over the next week about easing some of our uh, social distancing uh, guidelines, easing some of our restrictions on our public health orders and begin to reopen um, some of our businesses. For um, some of our businesses to reopen, we'll first review those that we consider to still be high risk for transmission of COVID-19 infections and those will remain closed. Those will be entertainment, uh, conference and sporting venues, uh, sports courts and playgrounds, public indoor and outdoor pools, uh, gyms and fitness centers, banquet rooms, and sporting events. Um, this will not include professional sports teams who are practicing without spectators. Um, bars and uh, businesses that um, do, not, uh, do not serve, um, or who serve alcohol and uh, do not serve uh, meals will be limited and will continue to be limited to carry out and curbside services. For businesses to open or to remain open, they must uh, adopt these um, public safety standards. Frequent disinfection of all high touch areas, uh, provide reasonable breaks for employees to wash their hands, to train employees on social distancing guidelines, to provide them with masks or materials to wear masks, to require employees to wear masks in a place of business, and to um, adopt signage and markings so everyone can understand um, how social distancing will be followed in each place of business. They will need to continue uh, daily screenings of employees for a risk of a COVID-19 infection 
and encourage and um, allow anyone who tests positive for COVID-19 to go into an isolation process until they recover and anyone who is in close contact and uh, needs to be quarantined uh, while they um, are um, waiting to see if they develop COVID-19, um, they must make arrangements for that as well in cooperation, of course, with our public health department. Um, businesses that have direct interaction with the public will be limited to 25% uh, occupancy of, uh, of, their, uh, of their rooms, their buildings, um, based on building code and fire code. And they will install uh, physical barriers any, any place where social distancing of six feet is not um, easily uh, accomplished. And they will prohibit uh, customers from bringing in outside uh, containers um, into the um, place of business. We would also expect to see uh, arrangements for, whenever possible, for uh, touchless payment, um, for uh, touchless delivery or, uh, or pickup, and continue those activities as we've seen in, uh, uh, in our essential businesses. Uh, businesses may also deny entry to anyone who is not wearing a mask. We expect those conversations and in interactions to continue to be uh, diplomatic and um, we recognize um, the challenges that we have in our community. But wearing a mask in public whenever social distancing is not possible is strongly, strongly encouraged and will be a big part of our recovery. Um, we will also limit intentional gatherings uh, intentional gatherings to 10 people or more um, uh, moving forward, um, which would um, be an exception to the occupancy permits that we previously discovered or discussed in these uh, businesses. Moving forward, this does not mean, as we start to discuss easing these orders, does not mean that we should let our guard down. This is a gradual process of reopening our, our county, a gradual, thoughtful, deliberate, and measured process will allow us to move forward, to continue to move forward, uh, will limit our risk of moving backwards, and will recognize that we've done a great job in suppressing the spread of this virus in our community. Our health systems and our public health officials are moving us in the right direction. And if we move forward in a thoughtful, deliberate manner, then I believe we have a path forward. We will continue to look to our health systems and to our public health officials to guide us, and we will continue to watch the data and the trends uh, the testing results as testing becomes more available, the hospital admissions and the hospitalizations moving forward. Those who do not feel safe uh, should not go out. Anyone who has a high risk, um, uh, has uh, complication, medical problems that makes them at risk, anyone who is older should continue to uh, think very carefully about whether or not they need to be out in this current environment. If one of us is affected, all of us is affected. No one is exempt from doing the right thing, moving forward as our community begins this process of recovery. We are all in this together. It will be a while before anyone can ask the question of when will things be normal again. We know uh, we'll need a vaccine to have that, and we know that that process is moving along uh, very quickly, and we're hopeful about uh, what's happening in our um, research facilities and our production facilities, but for now, this is our new normal. And I'd be glad to answer any questions. What does this mean? Are there in the same the county for daycare centers right now, before May 18th, it's limited to kids of emergency personnel. Uh, what does this new order mean for, for child care centers? We'll be providing some uh, direction and guidance and more detail to ch child care centers. Um, we understand that um, we will need to um, make those uh, facilities um, safe, and we have guidance to do so. What does this mean for summer camp? Uh, we are, uh, at this point, we are not ready to uh, discuss uh, opening of camps or congregated gatherings that um, are high risk, and we're going to watch the data over the next couple of weeks and continue to talk about that. What about hair salons, nail salons? What category does that fall under? 25% um, uh, barriers, uh, barriers when, we are, uh, when social distancing can't be maintained, and masks, like any indoor business, masks. And then what do you have to say to businesses that might be trying to reopen but can't find you know, the masks and the supplies? We're hearing from some people saying that 
you know, the price points, they can't afford them, trying yeah. to order them. Uh, the, you know, the market to purchase masks in is, is very difficult. Um, we'll certainly watch our supply lines. If we can be helpful, we will. I think that some uh, businesses have been uh, trying to purchase those supplies for a while and have been preparing for this, and some already have masks. Um, uh, you can also make face coverings. Uh, there's all kinds of videos on, on YouTube on how to do that um, in 45 seconds or a minute with a handkerchief. Uh, we need a face covering. We need a mask, either um, a simple mask or a cloth covering mask. And uh, we hope over the next week that folks will be able to find those supplies, either purchase them or make them. So is that going to come down to kind of then the personal responsibility then? I'm thinking if a salon can't necessarily provide masks for everyone, but I could bring mm -hmm. my own. Yes, exactly. individuals would, should bring their own masks. I don't know. We, at some point, we'll get to the point where businesses may supply a mask for someone who doesn't have one. Um, when, um, but we hope we don't see too many people out in the public without a mask moving forward until we get through this process. We know that masks help, we know that masks work, we know that masks help us ease our, our, um, our requirements and allow people to move about more frequently and it's a very important part of our process. But um, some businesses may be able to provide masks to their customers, but we expect them to, at a minimum, have masks for their employees. And you said gyms um, and pools as well. What about for things like at apartments or hotels? I believe there have been some guidance in other counties that hotel pools could open up. Uh, hotel pools is, is a public pool and will be restricted in St. Louis County um, at least for the next uh, couple of weeks as we watch the data. Uh, going back to the whole child care situation for a second, and, and I want to make it clear, like my child care is fine, so this is not just answering for me, but for a lot of people that can't find child care, and if summer camps are still in limbo, and some of these businesses that you list here open and start requiring people to go back to work, aren't you like creating a lot of uncertainty about how families are going to be able to actually arrange to go back to work if you don't have the child care situation handled? So there is everything about this COVID-19 infection creates an enormous amount of uncertainty. And there are many, many variables that we have to manage and trying to find a path forward. Uh, none of them are um, going to be great, but we think we have a path forward that balances the risk of public health and exposure and transmission. And uh, every, every decision we make is based on high risk or modest risk of transmission of COVID-19 and social distancing measures to limit that. Um, you've identified one of our challenges that we're working on and that is childcare. And we're gonna provide some guidance on that, but there is no great solution. Um, there will be uh, an okay solution moving forward, but the primary focus that will drive us is our public health measures how do we limit the spread of COVID-19 virus in our community while we safely start to open up some of these measures? But everything is driven by the process of saving lives, limiting the transmission of COVID-19 infection. And there will be lots of challenges and lots of frustrations as we move forward, but we believe we will get there and we will find a path. What does the timeline look like for possibly, you know, you said indefinitely we'll reevaluate on the 15th, kind of piggybacking off that question. I'm thinking a lot of parents are gonna listen to this and think, this is going to be a very long summer. If yes. I don't have anywhere to take my child, especially come, you know, triple digits in July and August. What do you have to say to them? Um, this is a very difficult process moving forward for everyone. It will be a very difficult process for people who are used to having a plan for summer that includes summer camps um, and child care facilities. It's absolutely going to be challenging. Uh, and uh, our primary question is going to be how do we prevent the spread of COVID-19 uh, virus in our community in a way that's controlled, in a way that we can uh, track people who are positive, isolate them and track their contacts. That drives all of our questions moving forward. All of these other questions about uh, reopening our businesses are very, very important to us. And we're going to try and balance that um, because that, that has to happen. All of these issues about uh, childcare are very, very important to us and we're going to try and balance that moving forward. But we're not ready yet to say that we're going to open summer camps and let people congregate we need to watch this virus uh, drop and, and make sure we can manage it. We need to watch our testing supplies, and uh, we're going to try and manage our child care facilities in a responsible manner. When do you think you'll have a better idea or another, assess another assessment look, I guess? Well, we, ch we watch the data every day, and uh, we will continue to do that. Um, our public health experts watch it. The Pandemic Task Force is helping us watch it. Uh, so we have a lot of people watching these sort of things. But the next step will be to watch how people react uh, how our, our business community reacts 
and um, watch the, the spread of the virus in our community after we take the first step in easing these social distancing, or easing these public health orders and uh, encouraging more social distancing measures, more wearing of masks than we already have in public. We need to see, we need to see more of that. And as we see uh, the acceptance of this new normal of social distancing and wearing masks, as we see that acceptance, then we can talk about um, easing our orders more. And we can talk about uh, whether or not we can have more gatherings. Uh, we can talk about whether some summer camps in some limited settings may be able to happen. But I'm going to look to my public health experts for guidance. The most important thing is to limit the spread of COVID-19 in our community as we're uh, waiting to develop better medical therapies and uh, waiting to get more testing materials so we can um, focus on isolating people who are positive and limiting the rapid spread of COVID-19 in our community. What about elective procedures? Uh, the hospitals will, will uh, start, or the hospitals are starting those, are coming up with a plan to slowly bring those back up. Um, I think that's important. A lot of people have been waiting for their knee and hip replacements and back surgery, and uh, we understand that that's important. Uh, and the hospitals will uh, determine their path forward based on their capacity. And as their capacity improves, I would expect them to start and restart elective procedures, and that's what I've heard them discussing. What about gyms? A lot of gyms are different. Some are planning to do just one-on-one -on -one personal training, no big type of fitness things. I mean, at some point, are you going to maybe think of different categories of, instead of lumping everything into a gym? Yeah, gym uh, remains an area of, of high risk of transmission, and we're working with our public health folks to talk about um, entertainment activities, gyms and spas, and what a safe way would, uh, would be to move forward. And we understand there's a lot of anxiety in that space and, and we're sensitive to it and we want to find a path forward. But right now it's uh, an area of higher risk and it will be a, a, a second step. Just on the timeline again, I just want to make sure I'm clear. For summer camps, you're not ready to make an assessment yet. You're looking at the data. For daycare centers, did you say you're going to have more on that like next week or something like uh, that? We'll have more guidance on that. We're talking to our, our public health department. We already have guidance on daycare centers that we've published. Um, and we would expect people to follow that guidance, um, but uh, we're going to talk more to, uh, to our public health department about that. And what you, you said, what is, what is the guidance on daycare centers? Uh, I, we'll get you that in writing. It's a very specific and outlined uh, uh, program. I, I couldn't uh, quote that from memory, but okay. we'll get that for you. But is it in here? Or is um, it I think it's been previously published, actually. Yes, it's in the Yeah. Yeah, in St. Louis County, um, people have a license as a restaurant or they have a license as a bar, and that license will drive your definition. Um, we're not uh, going any farther than that. Um, bars uh, bars uh, can continue to serve um, uh, curbside or carry out uh, moving forward, and then we'll reevaluate that in a couple of weeks as we watch the data and we watch the response to our first step in easing our measures. If you have a restaurant license, then you'll be treated like a restaurant at 25% capacity with social distancing measures as we've outlined. Well, I have, I have a question about the other counties. Like mm -hmm. the surrounding counties like Jefferson and St. Louis and St. Charles are going to be markedly different than this or the cities. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how is that going to affect the mitigation efforts of COVID-19? region which is highly mobile well it's it's a variable um, and it's something we watch and, and we're aware of there's always going to be a border a county border or a state border there's always going to be a transition zone um, the east side of st louis county um, looks more like this the west side of st louis city and the west side of st louis county looks more like the east side of st charles county the west side of St. Charles County looks more like Warren County, and there's always going to be those transitions, and we just have to recognize that and deal with it and, and watch it. But there will always be differences. Um, St. Louis City and County are much more differently affected than the state, and so we'll make decisions together that um, affect our area that's much more densely populated. We think we've got a good plan moving forward. We think this will be measured and cautious and careful, and we will watch the data and we will ease the restrictions um, in a way that's responsible. What about, you? I know you and uh, Mayor Cruz and we're working closely together to come up with these guidelines. Are, are 
what is exactly what we're going to see coming out of the city, or how much can how much? Can I think these will be very close to what's happening in the city, and um, but I'll let uh, Mayor Cruz and talk about, about her guidelines, but I believe that they will be very close. Uh, we've worked very closely together on developing these guidelines. Our health departments are working closely together. We're working closely together with the health departments of the um, other jurisdictions around us, Jefferson County, Franklin County, and St. Charles County, because um, regardless of our restrictions, which are dependent really on the spread of the virus in our community, the public health response is going to be the same. Test as much as possible, isolate people who are positive, uh, track their contacts, and then give their contacts advice on whether or not they need to quarantine. Can we go, sorry, I know we already touched on this, but can we go back to gyms for a second, because I know these gyms are, are dying to get open, and mm -hmm. what are they going to survive? I know you asked this too, but can we give them a date on when they may, when you may look at the gym? No, I don't, there are, there are many um, businesses that um, would like to have a date, uh, we can't give a date responsibly unless we watch and see where the data goes and see how these new social mes me uh, distancing measures are accepted in our community and see how our next round of businesses that are reopening are impacted. But there are many um, other businesses that are considered high risk for COVID-19 transmission and we're not ready. Our public health guidance at this point is not ready to allow opening of any sort of activity that is considered high risk for COVID-19 infection, no matter how much we feel for those businesses, how much we like those businesses or like the people who run those businesses, we have to pause here and take uh, our first step. What's your take on mental health right now? I think with everyone having been cooped up so long and then now looking at right. potentially the summer being cooped up, bringing up the issues of summer camps, kids being home, I mean, what kind of problems are we creating here and what it, how is the county looking in terms of mental health concerns right now? Well, this COVID-19 infection has um, been nothing like we've seen in 100 years and we've created an enormous amount of challenges in our community. Mental health is, um, is always a challenge in a depressed economy and in a time of high stress and a time of a public health crisis. Those are all um, variables that will, um, will challenge our mental health resources and individuals as well. Um, being cooped up, not having as much activity, I, that's a variable as well. But these other issues are all, um, they're all a big deal. And we understand uh, that, um, that we will have uh, increased access to mental health uh, uh, treatments, counseling, and we want to make sure that's available, especially in our vulnerable populations. We would encourage people to interact with their friends as much as possible um, on video or phone calls, stay in touch. Um, all of this is a very important part of responding to this crisis. But we recognize that um, you know, the mental health of our community is uh, under stress right now, and we're watching it, and we're looking at how we can help, and we're encouraging this discussion everywhere we can. This may be more of a state question because a big issue nationwide has been as, as businesses open up and start to say, tell people to come back. There's the whole question if the people say, no, I don't want to come back, or no, I don't have child care, I can't come back, and they get fired. It's the whole question of whether they, A, would still have unemployment, and B, whether they can sue the companies for you know, mm. firing them. Is there any concern that the county may be under liability based off of this? Uh, if some of those scenarios happen, that somebody with means could actually sue the county because some of the arrangements made it unconducive for them to come in, or would that be more of a state issue since they handle unemployment? Well, there, there are many new complex legal um, challenges and economic challenges in this pandemic. It's something we've never seen before. Um, you know, folks sue the county all the time, you know, several times a week. There's something going on, and uh, sometimes it's uh, something we've seen before, and sometimes it's something new and creative, and we'll let the court system manage that, and we'll manage it the best we can. There's a lot of legal challenges surrounding public health in particular the rights of an individual to move freely in the community and the rights of um, our community to not be exposed to uh, a deadly infection. And we're trying to balance all of those. Some of that works into employee-employer relationships, uh, work comp laws, um, insurance risk. Those are all very complicated legal scenarios without the added complication of public health law and an epidemic that we've never seen before. We'll work through this and as measured and, and thoughtful way as possible and when 
issues are too complex that reasonable people can't work them out, then the courts will get involved. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.